Kibi, 2019 African Cup champion uh, with Team Congo. His uh, parents' birthplace, is that right? All right, so how are you doing? Welcome to our show. I'm doing well, thank you for having me. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Good to have you here. Sure. Before we get into basketball questions, yeah. we just wanted to, we just did a little bit of research just to okay. get to know you and we mm -hmm. found out that you were actually born in Quebec City. Yes, I was right. born in Quebec City. Uh, so you want to tell us about 19, that? What, 1990? Um, yeah, and then I uh, grew up there in the Congolese community over there. My parents went to uh, Industrie Laval. Okay. I think like a lot of uh, Congolese parents kind of that were in that area and stuff. Uh, grew up there till I was seven. Then moved to uh, moved to Ottawa when I was seven or eight, and uh, kind of took it from there. Yeah. And when you came to Ottawa first, mm -hmm. where did you move to? Like uh, we, so when I I came to Ottawa, moved to Orleans. Orleans, okay. <coughs> I was in Orleans. Uh, grew up in Orleans most of my childhood, teenagehood. Uh, and then we had a house there up until uh, like recently, until five, six years ago when my parents moved to Montreal. Okay. And stuff like that. But yeah, I'm right from the east. And, nice. and, stuff. and uh, when you originally first came to, uh, to Ottawa, th did you like it at first? Or like, how did you feel about it? Well, at first it, it was different because uh, I didn't speak English yet, right? Oh, okay. So I was coming, uh, just still going to French school, stuff like that. I didn't speak English yet. But then finally I learned, I think, grade, uh, probably grade seven, grade eight. But I like that. I've always liked Ottawa. You know, right. It's my type of city. Right. So you were saying that you learned uh, English mm -hmm. in grade seven. What other languages do you speak other than French? Obviously. Uh, so I speak uh, Lingala, obviously, uh, Chiluba, because my dad. Uh, I understand Swahili a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, uh, from playing abroad, I've learned I learned German. Oh, really? Uh, Spanish and a bit of uh, a bit of Dutch. Cool. So, like, I counted like eight, yeah. eight languages. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I speak English and just a little bit of French. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you remember your first day in Ottawa? My first day in Ottawa. Wow. No, I don't really remember. <laughs> Man, that was long ago. Twenty years ago. Almost, yeah. So when you moved here, did you like to directly go to an English school or you go to French? No, we went to. Uh, to say so that was a French school we went to French school up until grade six mm -hmm. and then grade six my mom sent us to Terry Fox in the east as well near St. Matt's yeah and then the come with these parents they just threw us in there and say learn English <laughs> that, that's what it did to me too far like <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you yeah, yeah so you know so it's kind of like that yeah no, what sports did you play um, growing up? Was it just yeah. basketball or did you? No, play I, I played everything. I played soccer. I played uh, played American uh, American football up until grade uh, grade twelve, grade eleven. I was a quarterback the whole time, you know. Oh, yeah. So I played I played uh, football, and then I had to decide. So I kind of stuck stuck with basketball. Uh, Jimmy. Yes. Uh, just just quick question. Um, when did you uh, start playing basketball? When I start playing basketball, so I started playing basketball uh, when I was uh, six, maybe six, seven years old. Six, seven. Okay. Yeah, um, like when did you realize like basketball was your calling or something like that? Uh, probably in grade nine and I was like 14 and I was just killing like 18 year olds. So I was like Watch Madness is intense. It's, 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 How was your experience on Watch Madness? 
just like the way it happened, like the way my season was, like I had so much stuff happen that season that like, uh, for example, I had, I, I lost a bit of focus for a little bit, so I missed some classes, so I, I, I had some bad grades, so I got suspended for like five games. And then uh, what happened? And then we, at the time we were the worst team in the conference, right? So we had to win our conference tournament to make it to March Madness. So we had to win like five games in five days. So first of all, I was suspended. So I wasn't even supposed to be on that team, but then they let me back on the team. And then I wasn't starting anymore, but I was still like a key, key part. Like I was starting before, I was like second leading scorer. Then that happened. But then after that, we had to win that tournament like five games in five days. So like we're playing, uh, we play uh, in the Texas, Western Kentucky, like teams that, the team we beat in the final, they beat us by 30 the week before. So that's what you call it March Madness because it's a one game. It's not. It's not a season game. It's one game. Whoever is better on that day. We played that team thirty times. They beat us twenty nine. But that day, we won on a buzzer beater. So that's that was my experience. You know, March Madness, and then you know the charter flights. And I met Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Steve Kerr, all those guys. It's like damn, I'm nineteen, twenty. Wow. I'm from leaving, I don't want to say I'm from Orleans, man. This is not <laughs> supposed to. Not even supposed to be here. So. Kareem, so Kareem was just like, oh, to stay in the moment, in the moment. you know, stay in the moment, and that kind of stayed with me a lot because sure, sure. sometimes as things happen, like you kind of forget why you're there and how you got there, and you get, it's it's easy to get caught up in, in some in things here and there, lose in, in like one decision can change your life and change exactly. your, your path, and you know I was lucky they gave me a second chance, but I did lose focus. I was 20 years old, 19 years old, yeah, the yeah, first time you get that kind of attention, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's like. It's easy to lose focus, but once you get that second chance, you just try to never look back. Yeah, that's really good advice that he gave you. Yeah. yeah. One thing though, like uh, you start touching on like more or less like uh, your mental state in college. Yeah. When you when you left college and like going on your pro, like yeah. when you find out like imagine let's say you prepare for the NBA, yeah. and then now you find out like I'm not getting drafted. Yeah. Do you feel like the college prepare you for that situation? Do they prep you for like? Imagine like what you're gonna face after yeah. you leave college. Uh, I think as a student, yes, but as an athlete, it's like your coaches are so. I mean, they tell you, yeah, you're you're there to get your degree. You you got a I got a full basketball scholarship. You pay for nothing all four years. You're there to get your degree, but at the end of the day, it's like you're getting pushed so hard by these coaches because their jobs on the line. That, okay. for example. When I left my school, my coach left to go to another school, and I never heard from that coach ever again when he went to another school, you understand? And this coach never told me, like, oh, like, uh, like keep going with your grades, make sure you graduate. No, because, you know, at the end of the day, it's it is what it is. Like, only the coach, of course I have coaches that I, I'm, I'm in touch with today, yeah. but not every coach is going to build that personal relationship with you and like, give you a heads up on, like, what's coming. You know, I was blessed. I was lucky. I'm, out of all my universities, I think we're two that are still playing. Out of how many guys are playing, like, move to it. Like, it's a blessing, you know? So, like, literally, because me, that's what I always wonder. Like, imagine when you, let's say, especially, like, for athlete on a scholarship. Yeah. Like, you have a scholarship to go to university, let's say. Now you get there. Do they prep you to, like, for a path to go professional? Yeah. And if that doesn't work, do they, like, try to no, reach out for you? Or that's not, all you Not much. You know, they prep you for life, for, for getting your degree. And after that, you won't live a regular life. They don't prep you for being a pro because, I don't know, I guess, that's why it's nice to always sometimes have maybe have a mentor, you know, or some of us, like, yeah. me, uh, after the March Madness, like, I think my chance to go to the NBA was the year that I got suspended. So I think that the year that I got suspended, because of small little mistakes, that kind of killed the NBA for me. Because I, I was on the path to go to the NBA, mm -hmm. but then that kind of killed everything, and then my senior year, so I broke my one foot, mistake. like one little mistake mm -hmm. on, and on an evening, like, like at a club, pretty much is what happened. You know, one little mistake, 30 minutes, probably ruined everything, you know, and then I got suspended and then this and that, so, you know, That's but crazy. after that, I mean, I just focus on trying to get the degree, you know, at least, at the very least, get the degree and then go from there, you know, try to be a pro and then after that, it's a blessing. And uh, I think we're getting old, so we have about 10 minutes, we have to go soon, so. Yeah. Um, we'll try to go into. So, but more.
more into like the pro career. Yeah. Uh, when you got the call, when you found out you're playing for Team Congo. Yeah. Me as a Congolese person, I remember when I saw your picture, I was like, yo! <laughs> so tell me, how did that feel? Like, yeah. Um, man, like I still remember it was like, what, 2000? Because at first I wasn't sure because it was really complicated to to get the, pa- to the passport. So at first, as Congolese, you can't have two passports. So I had to kind of fix all that. So we started the process in like 2016 and it took like almost a year, right? So when I finally got it, I got it like right in time because the, the Afro basket in 2017 yeah. was in, uh, well, we had to be there in June and I probably got the passport in like mid-May. So I, it was really, really close, you know? Yeah. And then after that, you still have to go to Congo and there's still 30 guys and you still have to make a team. Oh, it's, it's 30 pros, right? A couple yeah. NBA guys, so it still had to, it's still yeah, a grind. Yeah, yeah. So it was cool to go to Congo, but then I still gotta make the team, you know? So, but I, I ended up making the team, I started every game, so it was like, that was 2017. And then two years later, same thing. And then like, it's cool because in our generation, we hadn't gone to the Afro basket since I think 1970. So in 2017, we made it to quarterfinals, we lost. And then in 2019, brought it home. we brought it home. And then oh. this summer, it's in Rwanda, you know? So it's like, you gotta defend the... So it's we like, get that. It's, like the, get gold, that it's like the golden generation. So it's like all those guys, like from those opportunities, like some guys went off to play in, in, in Spain and France. I, I think from then on, my career kind of went like this, you know? Yeah. So. I was it's meeting the president. This is actually from uh, my little brother. Yeah. He's like a big Chisagiri fan, so yeah. he was just wondering like how was he, like how was he doing? Man, he was he was humble, man. He was very humble, you know. He was very nice to us, he's very uh, appreciative of what we did. You yeah. know, representing the country like that. Bring it we brought the, the cup home for him. I think it's still at the Palma over there, you know. He gave us some gifts and stuff, so he's very very good guy, you know, we didn't get to talk, it's not like I sat down and had a beer with him, but <laughs> I, just, I shook his hand, you know, and uh, that's it. Yeah. Definitely, thanks for that. So we got to get to the fun uh, segment. Yeah. So this segment is more about like, uh, how well do you know your team? This is in regards to like the Skyhawk. Yeah. I don't know like how long, because we need one of the questions that I had, because remember you did play in the Skyhawk in 2015. Yeah. Two, it was 2012, I think, 2012. Yeah. Yeah. Was that far? Yeah, it was that far, bro. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> So yeah, like, what do you find like the difference between uh, the sky hop and the black hop, like, or is it like similar? No, it's, it's it's like it's not even a difference. Like they, they weren't. I think uh, the sky hops they kind of rushed it a little bit and they weren't very organized. So you know with how they did things. Yeah. But like, uh, and I think the the blackjacks. The difference is that it's a summer league. So guys are coming home from playing abroad and they can play here, oh, okay, earn okay, some okay, good okay, money, okay. and then after, still get to go overseas, you know, after. So it's only until August, so it's two months, but it's, it's kind of like the CFL, right? Oh, no, no, no. So that, and then it's just, it's a bit more organized, you know, I think it's from the top down, they're two different leagues too. Oh, okay, so okay, 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 okay. They're, it's a bit better organized. So I think that's, the professionalism is very important. I think that's the difference. Okay, and uh, so like I was trying to watch your first game on Thursday. Yeah. Did you try to like, keep an eye on it? Yeah. It looks like you guys uh, yeah. didn't start off well. No. no, no. So how are you guys feel, feeling for this season? Because again, like, yeah. where are we trying to win from? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. Like the game on Thursday was tough, man. Like uh, we had a tough practice yeah. this morning. Uh, another one in 30 minutes. So it's like, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't feel good to lose like that, you know, it's like, uh, and then, uh, I think the other teams, they know on our team, there's a lot of big names, uh, okay. so I think they really came, they punched us in the home, to be honest. Yeah, I was sure, I was waiting for this interview after a yeah, job, I know, you know, you asked about But like, you learn, it's like my 10th year now, so it's like, it's, you know, you kind of, you learn, you let it sink in, and then you move on. You can't let that, I can't go to practice sad because we lost, I mean, we get to play again on Monday, and that's it, you fall down, you get up, and you grind, and that's all. No, it makes sense. And the last question, at least for me, is this one is from Victor. Yeah. He wanted to know, like, uh, out of all the places, the team, the country that you play for, yeah. which uh, place do you, do you like the most, like, country? Um, the, the city that I like the most was Barcelona. So I lived in Barcelona for a year. Yeah. But I, I felt like, other than Congo, the place that marked me the most was, uh, I played in Iraq for four months. Yeah. 
that place like it really like it marked me because like you know what people what they say in the media is like sometimes it's bullshit you know it's whack because those, those people over there there's some of the friendliest people like my teammates there's some of the friendliest people you'll ever meet you know yes they're, they're muslim they're whatever and yo you go to baghdad there's a beach man. Because this is what this is not what they tell us on the media. But when I went there and I saw Baghdad, I'm like, of course there's there's stuff that happened from the war and everything. But the war is America attacking them. That's not the war. <laughs> they attack them. <laughs> so that's not their fault. But now Iraqi people they can't travel anywhere. With that, with that visa you can't go anywhere. The, the only place they can go they've ever been was Turkey. Because Turkey's right there. That's crazy. So, but, Think about it. Most of them will die will die without ha ever having get the opportunity to leave Iraq, and that's because the U.S. attacked them, you know. And now the because the U.S. kind of red red marked them. Yeah. But now, man, those guys, man, they just they love playing ball. They it's like it's great, man. They're just, like, very good people. No, I really I couldn't even picture like yeah. the whole idea of you playing. Yeah, that. so it was, it was definitely it was humbling, man. So that that marked me the most. Uh, 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 best city was Barcelona. Best city was Barcelona. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is gonna be kind of like a flash round of questions. Yeah. We're just gonna ask you real quick, yeah. and then first the answer that comes to your head, just shoot it out. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. So, um, who's the player to look out for on your team? Kadri Gray. Okay. Who's the funniest teammate? Me. <laughs> That's not all about that. <laughs> Best dressed. Chris Joseph. Um, which coach can still play? Patrick Ewing Jr. Uh, who's the fastest on the team? Ali So. He's, he's from Ottawa, actually. Oh, okay. Who's the homebody? Homebody? Homebody, yeah, stay home. Uh, uh Kadri. Kadri? And who's the gym rat? The guys under 22, 23. The guys are still young. <laughs> <laughs> the young the gym uh, Trying to show you guys up. Uh, I'm tired. Who's the best shooter? Johnny. Johnny Okay, He's a junkie. Uh, Tajay. 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 Who's always late? Guillaume Katar. He's the one making you guys do suicide all the No, but he's always late. <laughs> he's like, he's not late, but he's like, it's cutting me close. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, hardest worker? Uh, Ali So, probably. What is the most shoes? Chris Joseph. Chris Joseph. <laughs> and um, who's always on social media? Me. Me? Are you? You guys are me. Alright, so that's all we have for you right now. Thank you for coming through. Uh, thank you, man. Thank, thank you for you. having me. It was an honor to talk to you. Thank you.